A strong person with an easy past. Also, I have never seen a smart gunner who did not train hard. This is the training and elimination session of Sierra police officers who wants to serve in the African Union mission in Somalia as from police unit starting April 2020. The FPO for short stands for formed police unit of which they have been prepared to like serve as um, security forces at the international scene. In discussions, it regards to having formed police unit, FPU missions, starting off around 2015. Sending formed police units on peacekeeping mission in Somalia is one of the ways in which the Syrian police contributes to the formation upholding and maintenance of peace in that country. So what they do in mission basically one they are responsible we refer to them as a protection force. That's a bigger thing. Protection force. They provide protection for if they are IDPs, internally displaced persons, they provide protection for them. If they are supposed to provide protection for individual police officers who are in mission, they do not carry weapon but they are there, they have to interact with them. Host police, they have to interact with um, IDPs, they have to interact with um, the, the, the nationals. Of the, so, if they are going there to interact with them in the quest to achieve their mandate, which has to be the capacity building, it has to be with um, mentoring of the host police, it is a responsibility to provide that kind of security. As AU expands its peacekeeping operations in Somalia, devoted peace loving members of the Syrian police endeavor to give their service as others did during Sierra Leone's struggle for peace in the 90s. These gallant men and women are trained to be experts in their areas of operation. The composition of the Form Police Unit, it's a total of 160 personnel. 160 personnel with six command elements. We have the contingent commander, deputy contingent commander, the operations officer, we have the logistics, the IT guys, and we have various components that mix up the FPU. It's not just about weaponry. When it comes to FPU, you have to provide the personnel, and those personnel must have the requisite training. And then, thirdly, they must have the requisite equipment to put within the mission theater. And so that one was very, very good. So we the SAP contracted due the tactical to provide the training. Training personnel on using their rifles, it entails a lot. That's why we have several methods in terms of training our personnel or training our trainees to perform as to expectations. One of the methods we use is the HDIP method, which is we explain to them what it's all about or what this particular module it entails and we demonstrate it. When we demonstrate, they will watch up at us and then we imit they imitate us. And according to their imitation, uh, imitation, and then we have to put them into practice because you cannot just imitate and then keep it in the box. You allow it to flow. The training is so hectic because it involves weaponry, tactical progression as well as classroom presentations. We also have specialized personnel in even the use of uh, SWAT, of which they can defuse bombs. You detect and you see how best we can fuse them up for road users so that it can be harmful to them. On the practical aspect, we have to look at the weapon in the area. After training the training, then we have to go to the range and then see their outputs or see their performance with terms of the weapons whether if they can able to expedite their, 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 their imitations as I said it earlier on and we also have the POM which is public order management in terms of public order management we have to train them again how to control crowd Preparing the third contingent for deployment in Somalia the Sierra Leone Police, in consideration of the political, socio-economic dynamics of Sierra Leone, 
coupled with the increasing population, has focused on policing strategies which are in tune with internationally acceptable practices, democratic policing and the rule of law. I think discipline counts a lot, apart from the tactics, apart from the knowledge, theoretical knowledge that they would have acquired before leaving the shores of Sierra Leone for Somalia. We also instill discipline because when you go to such missions, you find out that discipline counts. In missions, in the mission theater, sometimes you find out that officers fall short, especially, especially in terms of discipline. But we we'll make sure, and we have already instilled some discipline in our men, that when we shall have been deployed to Somalia, we would not encounter any problem at all. We had our first deployment in April, April 2017, and then we found FP1. They completed our training. They completed their time mission. They came back in 2018. We now have the second group there, otherwise in fact was FP2, 2020, we are going to have the third group there, FP3. Anybody that wants to go to mission is always determined. So all the teams, the contingent from FP1, 2 and 3, they are all determined. And we have competent people of which we know they can as well man the affairs of the mission when they go to the mission theater. They are there as the kind of protection for us. Just like we have the OSDs back home, the OSDs they provide security, they provide support to general duty personnel. They are there to keep the peace at various mission areas, of which their mandate differs from that of the individual police officers and that of other forces like the military. We do have our own mandate as specified in the MOU. Weapon is a must that you have to learn because it's a must that you defend yourself when the issues or time arises. According to the Director of Peacekeeping Operations, AIG Gloria Ovi Tawali, the Farm Police Unit personnel are trained on how to manage mass actions, react to public order situations, hostage rescue, and other police tactical operations. She emphasized that it is essential for the trainees to go through what she referred to as a bone crushing training in order to capacitate them physically for the armysome task ahead of them. The use of non lethal weapons, respect for human rights, and others are some of the areas this unit focuses on. The training is so stressful, it can shoot people's blood pressure, and then we don't want people to go out there having heart problems or other medical issues. So we've been there in training, even though we, we are also part of the training, because if you're in the world, so nobody will ask whether this is a medical person, this is what, or... So we all go through the training, but at the same time, we are there providing the necessary medical checkup. We've been monitoring their health status, doing some basic labs and uh, monitoring all other health aspects of their training. Courage is not formed in the absence of fear, and strength is never formed in the absence of challenges. At some point in their training period, in spite of all the bottlenecks they faced on the road, the FPU3 trainees spent more than three days to reach their special duty areas of deployment. The FPU training at least has exposed us to know how to use all weapons. Now, I don't think, when I tell, sometimes I tell my colleague doctor, hey, you guys are just doctors, you do just new syringes, needles and stethoscope. But now I know all these things then, I even know guns. Because the FPU training is, is so intense that and it's, it's so educative that you virtually know everything. The military tactics, the weapons, and everything about warfare. So it's a huge, huge benefit for the SMP because our personnel are getting the required experience, the required exposure, and then they come back home and implement those stuff. And they equally so on an individual basis, on a personal basis, they make their own money, they come back home, they do their investment, and that money or the benefit they get from it, their people will benefit, their family members will benefit, and even their kids, I'm sure they will place in better schools. And for the SLP, of course, like I said, the experience you bring back home is like 
we've exported this because we had we had gone through our own people, our own kind of times between 1991 and 2002 when President Kabat declared the war done go. I mean, it was a difficult one. So now we are exporting peace to other nations. That's also another very good thing. And um, internationally, I'm sure we are being recognized based on the fact that we are also exporting peace to other nations. My assurance to the organization that in Israeli place, the families of the personnel and all the people of Sierra Leone is that these people have been trained, they've got an international training, it is a standardized training. Wherever you go in the world, you find out that they perform the same type of training as the one that is being given to our personnel here, that is the FBU personnel.